Were you there when he rose up from the dead? Were you there when he rose up from the dead? Oh, sometimes I feel like shouting glory, glory, glory. Were you there when he rose up from the dead? Indeed, friends, were you there? We are, we are so grateful that you are here joining us today. This great day of Easter, the day that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. We have celebrated a Good Friday service in which we along with so many others throughout the centuries, mourned with Jesus as he journeyed on the walk towards the cross, as he lamented, as he cried out, as he was laid in the tomb. And now, this morning, friends, we get to celebrate. So I'm so glad that you are joining us on this day that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Will you please join me with the opening sentences of worship? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Indeed, friends, let us rejoice and be glad in this day as we now come to our first hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today, alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, alleluia. Sing ye hymns and earth reply, again our glorious King, Alleluia. Where all death is now thy sting, Alleluia. Dying once he all doth save, Alleluia. Where thy victory, O grave, the fight, the battle won, alleluia. Nothing vain forbids him rise, alleluia. Christ has opened paradise, alleluia. Soar we now where Christ has led us. Across the grave, the skies, Alleluia. Ah, indeed, friends, Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Praise the goodness of our God as we come to this day of celebration, this day in which we gather as God's people to give thanks for God's grace bestowed upon us. And now, friends, it is for that very sake of grace that we are called into this time of confession. We might not feel like confessing on a day like today, 
but perhaps it is all the more important that we do so. We're reminded on a day like today that it was our sin that put Jesus to the cross. It was our sin that Jesus willingly took upon himself. And though we have been forgiven of our sin, it does not excuse our behavior when we walk away. We still, every day, every moment, have the opportunity to choose our faith, to choose to follow, to choose to say yes to grace and a mercy, and to say no to sin in our lives. And so now, as we are called into this time of confession, we are called into this moment. And first, we have this silent moment in which we allow God to speak to us in which we have that very moment in which we offer ourselves up to our God. And then, friends, after that moment of silent confession, then together in unison, I invite you to pray aloud with me the prayer of confession as it is printed in your bulletins. And so now as we trust in the goodness and the grace of our God, let us bow our heads together and let's enter into a time of prayer. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus through, the, through power the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit we, we have been raised from the waters of baptism to share in your, your glorious resurrection. resurrection. Yet we, we have not lived as Easter people. We are, are unsure of your promise, confused about your will, and afraid, afraid in the face of, of danger. Whenever, whenever we are tempted, are tempted to fear, to fear death, death Give, give us courage to confess your, your Easter, Easter victory. Whenever we are overwhelmed by the, by the power of evil, reveal again to us your triumph over the destructive powers of oppression. Forgive our sin and let our lives be a testimony to your salvation through the love of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Indeed, friends, amen. And now hear these words of forgiveness. Listen, church, God who raised Jesus from the dead has not given us over to death. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen and hallelujah. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Indeed, amen. I now invite you to join with me in the unison reading found in your bulletin this morning from Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2 and 14 through 17. This great psalm meant for us this day that we celebrate the resurrection of our God. Give thanks to the Lord, for, for he, he is good. good. His, His love endures forever. forever. Let Israel, Israel say, His love endures forever. forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resounds in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done many things. The Lord's right hand has lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live and will proclaim what, what the, Lord the Lord has, has done. done. Indeed, friends, we do proclaim what the Lord has done on a day like today. For this is indeed the day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing together, and let us be glad in this day. Now, all throughout our Lenten preparations, as crazy as they were, as short as they were, as different as they were, 
This is a day that we have been waiting for, isn't it? We knew this day was coming, a day which took death in the chops. As it says in 1 Corinthians 15, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Today is a reminder that no matter our circumstances of our lives, no matter the difficulties we encounter, no matter the heartache or the pain we might feel, God has a plan and is with us this time. Now, there's no doubt we need this good news, the news of triumph that we stake our entire lives upon. We need to remember that our faith journey 2,000 years ago, it began with uncertainty. It began with fear. It began with trembling. As Mary and the other Mary approached the tomb of Jesus on that early Sunday morning all those years ago. We need to know that those who went to the tomb that morning did so with heavy hearts because death had come so close. And yet, this great triumphant event had occurred. And that's where we turn to our gospel lesson for this morning, friends, from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Listen now to the word of the Lord. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you to into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go, tell my brothers to go into Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, as we come to your text today, it's a text we need. It's a passage like balm that will soothe our souls. Help us, Lord, this morning as we come to your word, that we may know it, that you may help me to preach it, that you may deliver us from evil, that you may direct us into your path, that we may journey together as your disciples. Use your word, Lord to revive us, and to guide us this day. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Well, I'll be honest with you. This whole season, the season of Lent, has really felt really weird. It's really felt really strange. And I bet I'm not the only one who has felt that way. In quick succession, we went from talking about this virus that was in a far-off land to being personally, radically affected by it in so many ways. Even on Palm Sunday, when we were able to gather together a week ago, everything felt just a little bit off. And then with Holy Week, without our ability to gather on Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday, it contributed even more to our sense of isolation from each other. I know that we would have loved to have been together. I would love to have had you in this place, and yet we could not. But the good news, friends, today is Easter, which means that today we celebrate the resurrection. No, no, often, uh, no matter, we have trouble getting our spirits up, but that's in normal days. That's in normal times. So perhaps the question for today is, what does it really mean to celebrate Easter today? How are we supposed to approach the resurrection of Jesus with all the things that we're going through? Well, the first way is to truly acknowledge our fear, 
our fear of the unknown, our fear of death. And the truth is that though death has come near to the friends of Jesus, it has come near to us, it doesn't change the death rate. It just makes us more aware. And that's what's happened. That's what Easter reminds us of. That's what Lent is for. That's what Good Friday is for. That's what this whole season is for, to make us more aware of our fragility. And for us to know and to understand that God knows that we are afraid of these things. As the women approach the tomb, they are told not once, but they are told twice in this passage to not be afraid. The angels tell them to not be afraid, that the angels weren't there to harm them, but that there was good news at hand, that Jesus, who had been crucified, who was dead, who was in the tomb, has risen. Second, when Jesus finally does appear, he tells them not to be afraid as well, that he indeed was alive. They clasped his feet. They were able to touch him. And that their job was to go into Galilee to spread the good news. Friends, if fear is our default response to something new and unsettling and alarming, then the words of Easter are meant to calm us and to bring us joy. I can't imagine all the emotions that the women were experiencing that day, but I am familiar with a sense of dread that accompanies the death of loved ones. I know the emotions that I felt as I've prayed with the families of the gravely ill or have had to share the bad news of the death of a member of our own community. It's one of my least favorite parts of being a pastor when I have to tell all of you that someone who lived has breathed their last on this side of heaven. It means that at times I've cried bitter tears. It means that at times I've fallen asleep, exhausted over the battle of life and death. Sometimes I've wondered how in the world can I pull myself together when all I feel is weakness. Right now, today, my heart is heavy. I feel burdened and a bit overwhelmed of everything that's going on right now. But it's also in these moments, both in the past and in the present, that the words of Easter resound within me. Do not be afraid. These are words that when I'm feeling down, when I'm feeling heartache, when I'm feeling like I can't do it anymore, these are words that I cling to. The whisper of the spirit into my heart, do not be afraid. The memory of Jesus telling his disciples, it is I, do not be afraid. The word of God slowly marching forward, spreading its warmth like the dawn into our lives. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. So let's not give in to the fear. Let's walk into the embrace of God. These are the first words of Easter. Because they are the words that we most need to hear in our times of trial. When we are beaten and worn down and sad and uncertain, these words need to penetrate us and to lift us up in spirit. These words are not assurance that nothing will go wrong or the assurance that everything will turn out the way we want them to. We know that life doesn't work that way. Rather, it's an assurance that whatever happens to us, Whatever the day might hold, no matter how near death has traveled to meet us, God has the power to strengthen and to uphold us. To not be afraid is to know and to understand that whatever we face in this world, we don't face it alone. This is the step that we are meant to take together as the people of God. This is who we are called to be as we try to understand what Easter means for us today. It is into our fear that the voice of Jesus speaks, do not be afraid, though your world turns upside down, though you don't know your left from your right, though you don't know what the day may hold, do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. The appearance of the angels at the tomb that bright morning is a reminder that God is indeed near, 
with hearts pounding in their chests, still breathless from the heavenly vision before them, these women at the tomb have showed up, all of a sudden realize that something new, something unexpected, something rather crazy is happening in their midst. And that the appearance of the angel is just an opening act of an even greater performance. God was not showing up too late, too little to clean up the death of Jesus. No, the angel is a messenger of God, tells them not only to not be afraid, but that Jesus is alive. Just as he said, he is risen. Just as he said, he's not here. Come take a look. And so they did. And once they took a look, they hurried away. And the text tells us that they were still afraid, and yet joy was beginning to creep into their lives. We know all too well, don't we, that fear robs our joy. If we allow fear to remain in our hearts, then joy will creep away. And fear, if we let it will come into our lives uninvited. And that's why Jesus says so many times throughout the Gospels, that's why God says all throughout the Old Testament, do not be afraid. Today, as we celebrate the resurrection, we have the opportunity to roundly reject fear and to replace it with joy. Joy is a choice. Joy is a step towards the embrace of God. Joy is comfort in the storm. Joy is a solid foundation beneath our feet. Joy is the assurance that God is with us and will never leave us go. Ultimately, friends, joy is meant to be the response to the resurrection. Because what other response can there really be? How else can we respond to something so unexpected, so ludicrous, so out of nowhere? The resurrection pulls us out of the miry pit, and it sets our feet upon the rock. And so the whole thing, those women that first day, though it must have been absolutely perplexing, they came to the sudden realization that the death of Jesus was not the end of the story. He is not not just just missing. missing. His body has not just been moved elsewhere. The women did not hallucinate about an angel He was alive. In fact, he was resurrected. The reason we know that is because the text then says, suddenly along the way, Jesus appeared to them and says, greetings. Oh, and that's all he says to begin with at the beginning. Note it is after they take the steps forward in faith that Jesus appears. It is after that they are on the road back to the disciples that Jesus speaks. The word in Greek here means to be glad to rejoice. It's meant to show us that the hard part is done, that though sorrow may last for a night, dancing comes in the morning. It is the call that echoes out in history to all who have met the risen Lord for ourselves. It's high fives and fist bumps and hugs and laughter and merriment all around. Friends, the resurrection reveals It's time to let loose. It's time to shout it from the rooftops that God has won and the morning has dawned. This means that joy truly is available to us today. Though we do have much to fear, though fear itself has come near, we can choose joy because joy allows us to recognize that God is with us in the midst of everything that storms around us. If Jesus can overcome death, what else can he really do for us? Can't he lift us up? Doesn't he call us to rejoice? Can't he fill us with his spirit so that fear truly finds no home in us? Yeah, friends, he absolutely can. He will, and he does. And that is what Easter is all about. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, a wonderful day of the resurrection, of the celebration, of joy that banishes your fear. Lord, right now, we recognize that we have a choice. We have a choice in which we can say yes to you. We can say no to fear. And so, Lord, on this resurrection day, help us to do that with you. It is by your strength, it is by your power, it is by your spirit that we are gathered. And so, Lord, 
will you come and comfort us and speak your words of truth to us once more. We pray this in your great and glorious name. Amen. Indeed, friends, amen. Let us now turn to our second hymn, In the Garden. Will you please sing with us? I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own And the joy we share as we tarry there None other has ever known He speaks and the sound of his voice Is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go through the voice of woe. His voice to me is calling. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known and now will you join with me in the affirmation of faith which is the good news. This is, this is the good, the good news, news which we received, received in which we stand, and by which we are saved. If we hold it fast that Christ, that Christ died for our sins, sins according, according to the scriptures, scriptures that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Indeed, friends, amen. We now come to the time in which we, together as the people of God, have the opportunity to present our tithes and offerings. We will dedicate the offerings that you have sent in already, and for the ones that you are currently writing and will be putting in this week, we will also be dedicating those as well. So let us now give of ourselves, of our lives, of our offerings to our God, who has saved us and who has set us free. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. 
And life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day I'll cross the river. I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Indeed, friends, amen. Will you now please join with me in the prayer of dedication. Almighty, Almighty God, God, by, by your, your grace, grace, accept the fruit of our, of our labor and the, and the offering of, of our lives in union, in union with, with our, our risen Lord. Lord who lives, lives and, and reigns with, with you forever. forever. Amen, Amen and hallelujah. hallelujah. Friends, I want to welcome you to this time of communion, this opportunity that we have this morning to celebrate the Lord's Supper and even though we are not together in the same room, I know by the Holy Spirit, we have the opportunity today to celebrate together over this vast space. So I hope now that in the place that you are, as you are celebrating communion with me, that you'll have your bread or your cracker or your English muffin lined up and ready to go, and that you'll have your cup of juice or wine or whatever you have as well ready to go, and that together we will celebrate this meal. I will eat and I will drink and I'll invite you to join with me at that time. And friends, here's this great news, that I'm not the one who makes this sacrament holy. It is not merely by my words that something magical or wondrous happens. I'm the one who simply God uses to allow us for this meal to become holy. It is the Holy Spirit within these elements that allow us to truly celebrate together. And so my prayer for you is that you may know that the Spirit is with you today, with us together as we come now to this table, as we are drawn to this place. As we do begin to prepare ourselves, I pray that you will join me in this time of prayer as we seek now to ready ourselves to celebrate this meal. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for this meal that you have given us. We thank you for your blessing, for your son Jesus, who we celebrate has given us life on this Resurrection Sunday. We pray now that you will prepare us to receive this meal, that your spirit will be upon us all and will be within us and within these elements as we celebrate over all these spaces. Lord, we know that as we are drawn to this table today, we're not drawn because we're holy ourselves. We're not drawn because we have our act together. We come because you invite us to come. So, Lord, ready us to receive what you have blessed us with. And we pray this in your great and glorious name. Amen. Well, friends, first, we turn to our bread. And we are reminded of those great words that Jesus had with his disciples as he celebrated with them in the upper room. 
as they were gathered, Jesus looked and he addressed his friends and he said, take this bread as he broke it. Take and eat, for this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Friends, let us now take this bread, this body of Christ, which is given to us for our sake, and let us eat of it together as one, as the people of God. And friends, let us now take the cup together and let us remember these words that Jesus spoke to his disciples at the end of the meal. He took the cup and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and drink. This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood. It is sealed for you for the forgiveness of sins and that so often as you drink of it, remember me. And now friends, together, let us drink of this as we remember. And friends, here's this good news. That as often as we eat this bread, and as often as we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again. And here is the good news. He will come again. For these are the gifts of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, friends, I'm so glad that you're able to join with me today in the celebration of this meal, a meal that Christians have been celebrating throughout the centuries from the very beginning, from when Jesus gave it to us as his disciples. Will you now bow your heads with me as we close this moment in prayer? Lord God, we thank you for this moment that you have given us, where we as your people are gathered around your meal we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus, your son, and the opportunity to remember today that we can choose your joy over the fear that we feel. Lord, though we know that death has come close, we know that you come closer than death. And so because of that, we come to you on behalf of all of those who we know are experiencing death and loss and illness in this time. Our whole community, Lord, even our world, is affected by coronavirus. We don't know where to turn. It feels like the, the, the footsteps that we are walking, we don't know what's, where it's going to go. It feels like the foundation beneath our feet is crumbling. And so we cry out to you. We cry out for your direction and your guidance. We cry out, Lord, that you will show us the way. And we pray for those specifically who are putting their lives on the line, for all of our doctors and our nurses, for all those who are out on the streets, the police and the fire and the EMS, for those who are serving us, helping us with food in the grocery stores and the restaurants. Lord, we pray your blessing upon them this day. We lift up our friends and our families and our neighbors who we know are directly affected by this virus. We especially lift up Henry this day. And we pray that you will bless him in his recovery. We thank you, Lord, that you have been with him. And we pray that you will help him to continue to grow. Lord, we know, though, there are many who do not see their loved ones go home. And we lift them to you, Lord. We lift those who mourn. We lift those who weep. We lift those who are angry. We pray for your spirit of comfort to come and be upon them. We lift up others, Lord, today who are suffering loss in other ways. We especially remember today Dave Court, who just a few days ago, he died and he went to you. Lord, we are so thankful for the witness that he gave us, for the ways that he made us smile, his quick wit. Lord, we know these last years have been very hard for him, for Carolyn, for his family. We thank you that he's now with you and that he's no longer suffering, but we lift Carolyn to you, Lord, and we pray for your hand of grace to be upon her in this time. And Lord, for those who do mourn, may your spirit of joy come near and may they be blessed. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be your people 
to celebrate your meal, to come and to remember your resurrection. And we close now this time together with a prayer that you taught your disciples, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Indeed, friends, amen. Will you now join with me as we sing our closing hymn, Thine is the Glory. conquering sun and less is the victory thou or death has won angels in bright raiment rolled the stone away kept the folded grave clothes where thy body lay thine is the glory risen conquering sun is the victory thou or death has won. Lo, Jesus meets us risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom. Let his church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For her Lord now lives that has lost its sting. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering sun. And this is the victory thou or death has won. No more we doubt thee, glorious Prince of Life. Life is not without thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan with the power and love. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering sun. And less is the victory thou or death hast won. Amen. Oh, indeed, friends, amen. I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to journey with you today, to celebrate with you today in worship. I now invite you to please join with me in the sending and in the benediction. Empowered, Empowered by, by the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, our, our mission, mission is to seek God, follow Christ, Christ serve and love our neighbor. our neighbor. And now that our worship has ended, let his mission begin. And let all of God's children say amen, amen and, and hallelujah. hallelujah. And hallelujah and hallelujah. <laughs> amen, friends. Have a blessed Easter. God bless.